British middle classes love to apologise for the evil that is Britain. Um, they do this uh, in order to show what wonderful, caring and learned people they are and uh, how they are morally superior to the ghastly people they find themselves amidst. Well, um, I wish they wouldn't do this. Um, I'm never really impressed when someone apologises for something that they never actually did in the first place. So saying, oh, uh, my great, 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 great grandfather's people, they did this thing which I now believe to be terrible, but at the time no one thought it was terrible, but I'm going to apologise for it anyway. I'm really unimpressed by this behaviour. Now, something that I've heard said, oh, so many times, is that the British invented the concentration camp, actually. Oh yeah, the British invented the concentration camp. Oh yes, it did. <sighs> no, they didn't. Um, the term concentration camp, yes, that was invented, I suppose, probably by someone who was British during the, uh, the Boer War. Um, but actually, the idea of getting lots of people and putting them in one place is not a tremendously complicated one. And any large society that's had to organise very large numbers of people, sometimes against their will, has at some point rounded up lots of people and put them in one place. It's easier to keep an eye on, the, on them that way. So, you know, the Chinese, the Aztecs, the Romans, you know, whatever big controlling society you want to name, they will have done it at some point. Um, so. Uh, and there's, there's no direct comparison at all with the Nazi concentration camps. These were forced labour camps, for one thing, and uh, they were also extermination camps. They were you know, set up in order to kill people uh, and or work them to death. Um, no, that's not the, what the camps were like during the Second Boer War. Now, the British Victorian Army fought 60 campaigns in Queen Vicky's reign, and uh, it won 59 of them. That's a pretty good batting average, I think you'll agree. Uh, the, the only one it, it lost was the First Boer War. Um, and it lost because it went out into the field expecting the Boers to play fair, play with a straight bat, and to fight big set-piece battles. And the British expected to uh, you know, inflict decisive defeats on them, and then that would be the end of the war. That didn't happen, though. The Boers, perhaps very cleverly, went in for guerrilla warfare, and this worked because they won the war. It shows what determination can do, and a knowledge of the countryside and so forth. Um, but the British didn't give up, and they had a second go, and there was the Second Boer War. And they'd had a rethink and decided, right, this time we're going to go about it in a, in a completely different way. And so what they did is they fenced off very large areas of land with watchtowers all along the fences, and then they swept that fenced-off area uh, of the enemy, and then they fenced off the next bit and so forth. Um, and this was a, a new way of uh, waging war, and eventually it paid dividends, it worked. It was ruthless, yep, it was ruthless. Uh, I'm not here to say that it was a good thing or a bad thing, it was just what happened. Of course, this made a lot of people homeless because the British said, right, if you are living in this area in which we're operating and you, you use your farmstead as an, a base for the Boers, uh, effectively you are now becoming part of the war and we will treat you as part of the war and we will burn down your farmhouse. And they did, they burned down lots of farmhouses and they, they, they ravaged crops and so forth. Um, and yet the Boers still used their farms as military bases and, you know, that was the choice they made and they got a lot of them burnt down. But then the British had, of course, an awful lot of homeless people on their hands. What do we do with them? Well, we can just let them all die or we can build camps for them. So they did. They built these refugee camps uh, and uh, there were then concentrations of Boers in these camps living there. And most of the male prisoners of war, by the way, were, were shipped abroad. So um, a very high proportion of the people in these camps were women and children. And a very high proportion of the children died. Um, something uh, over 20,000, getting the exact number is rather difficult, but over 20,000 Boers died in these camps. And uh, yes, of course, that's a terrible thing. But they, they were dying of um, hunger and disease. Uh, not of, of gas and bullets. They weren't there to be killed, they were there to be housed. Um, those camps were set up um, you know, by the British thinking that they had some duty of care for the people who they'd just made homeless. Um, now, a lot of people say, ah, yes, but, you know, actually it was a policy, you know, it was a policy to, to starve them to death. Well, no, I don't think it was. Um, and I'm just going to, I'm going to put forward just the one argument of, for this one. And it's that at the same time, 15,000 of the British around these camps died also of hunger and disease. It was, there was a massive logistical problem. Getting food to these people was very, very difficult. And of course, very, very hungry, underfed people are less resistant to disease. And so if disease breaks out, 
it uh, has a very, very heavy death toll. So um, if 15,000 of the guards died, whilst 20, maybe 20 something of, of the people they were guard, and you didn't have one guard per prisoner, per, I said prisoner there, maybe I should have said per interned person, whatever. Um, you don't have one for one, do you? So if 15,000 of the British around these camps died, that suggests um, that, you know, that they were being almost generous with the amount of food they were giving the people in the camps. Um, uh, but yes, uh, there, you know, there was a very heavy death toll in the camps and uh, there was quite an outcry uh, within Britain about this and conditions were improved massively and they got it down to 2% death rate. You may say that's still quite high. Well, it is by modern standards, but actually that's a lower death rate than the British in British cities in Britain had at the time. Ironically, one of the reasons it was so difficult to get food to these people was that the Boers were disrupting the supply lines all the time. So, the British invented the concentration camp. Oh, shut up.